All right, so this is going to be part two to what if Asta had light magic. So with that being said, let's just roll the intro. So in the last part, we had just gotten done with Asta basically getting to Black Bulls and him learning a little bit of magic with Fonzel, which if you don't remember who that is, that is the red haired person in the beginning of the series that helps Asta learn how to use a sword. But before I get any further within the video, I like to say that if you enjoy this series, please give it a like as it does help out the video and also the channel. And if you haven't already, please subscribe as that also helps the channel. So let's get back into the video. I knew last part was going to be somewhat controversial in the way that I portrayed Asta in the sense of making him not as strong as he typically would in my normal series as well as giving him a lot of flaws with certain abilities such as his control over his magic as well as his reaction time. A lot of people got upset with the fight against Sekei and the reason why it was very controversial was I had him struggle a little bit and I think people misunderstand what I was trying to go for. So the reason why Asta had a hard time was not because of Seke himself, but because of the powers that he has. I imagine almost something close to Noel, but not to the same level of difficulty. And that's why he had such a hard time. It's not because Asta himself is not strong, it's rather his control that's lacking. So with that explained, let's get into the rest of the story. So let's get to the part where Asta basically gets to the Black Bulls hideout. Now he would obviously meet all the members and he would have to do the baptism by fire. Now it's going to be similar to how it was in canon, just a little bit different as he wouldn't be so physically fit to do every challenge. This is due to the fact that Asta focused on his magic rather than his physical body as he just generally didn't really need that as he did in canon. So yeah, also he would have some level of strength due to the lifestyle that he's living, it being a lot harsher than royals or nobles as he still has to do physical labor. So he would have some strength combined that with his genetics and I went over that in the last video so I won't go too much in detail. So yeah. After the physical part of the baptism was over, Asta would then would have to survive spells from Magna. It would be rather interesting how he would do it. Obviously he'd be fast enough to dodge it, but the last spell that Magna would throw, that being his most powerful one, would be a little bit different than usual. Instead of just normally dodging it, as Asta knows that it has a very large radius as it's gonna basically blow up, Asa decides to do a more defensive spell. Now within Norse mythology, there is this shield that basically protects earth. It shields the sun so it wouldn't burn the earth. That shield being Svelin. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But yeah, basically in Norse mythology, it's a shield that protects the earth from the sun by basically not letting it burn. So you get the idea, a light shield. So that's what Asta creates. He makes a giant shield in front of him and a image of the sun is plastered on top of the shield so you get how the design looks like. Now Asta decided to do this for a few reasons. Because it's so close to him and it's just a defensive spell, it's just easier to maintain compared to something else. Not only that, but it would be more impressive if he was able to tank the hit rather than dodge it and he wants to make a good impression on the rest of the squad. So that's what he does. Magna would be surprised that he was able to do so. But knowing that he has light magic, he isn't all too surprised as remember, light magic is quite rare. After this, this is when Asta would talk with the rest of the Black Bulls and basically discuss his win, celebrating it essentially. And this is when Magna would ask Asta what social class he is thinking that he's a noble due to the fact that he has very powerful magic and the rarity as well. Asta would kind of laugh it off thinking that it's a joke and he would just say oh uh, I'm a peasant from Haj village. And that's when Magna tells him that he's also from a small village nearby 
called Saucy Village. Both of them being peasants, they, well, bond over this. Seeing that Asta could be so powerful yet be a peasant gives Magnus some inspiration. So we could skip to the next day and this is where Asta is basically checking out the entire hideout. He sees all the chores that he would have to do and after this he would meet up with Noelle. The first time meeting would be slightly different as she would ask him of his nobility and whether or not he was one. Now obviously Asta isn't and he wouldn't lie so after hearing this she would be kind of confused at the very least to see that a person from such a remote village would be so powerful especially someone with light magic. Now that being said she would be kind of jealous seeing that he is thriving in such an environment while she is a noble and has the flaw of not being able to control magic not knowing that Asta does have the same problem as her. That being said she would storm off just like she normally does with her trying to shoot Asta for upsetting her but it would backfire and hit Magna instead. So after this point nothing really changes too much so let's get to the point where Noelle is basically consumed by her magic. Now in this Asta does not have anti-magic to make it easier so instead of the normal process of you know just cutting the spell in half and basically dispelling it that way they would have to do different methods and more complicated methods of that. So what would happen is Finro would open up a portal as Yami and Asta would jump through it. Yami would use his black hole spell to take out some of the magic that's there basically giving it a thinner coating of protection while Asta gets in there using his speed to get Noel out. Because it's water it's able to pass through and the light can just go wherever it wants. With Noel saved, she becomes very embarrassed, thinking that they're going to laugh at her, but instead gives her words of encouragement, saying that everyone has a flaw, and Asta himself speaks up, talks about how he himself has trouble controlling his magic as well, and everything like that. With both of them having the same problem, they have something to, well, connect with, and that's what they do. Noel sees that even Asta, who seems very powerful, has flaws as well, and therefore, get some confidence back. Let's skip ahead and get to the part where they actually have to go to Saucy Village to get some boars. Now on their way there, Asta would be able to go by himself, but after Noelle sees Magna's crazy cyclone, she wouldn't want to go on it, instead rather go wing with Asta. Remember, she can't control the magic too well at this point, so she can't use her own broomstick. So they all go off to Saucy Village to collect some boars. Now obviously Magna isn't as tired as he was in canon and therefore is able to help with the hunting to get it done a lot faster. This is when they get to the village actually on time. They make it to the outskirts of the village and this fog appears distorting their vision. It's hard for them to get around and they can't sense too much so what they do is using Magna's memory basically go through the town. Now it's a bit hard at first as there isn't much to tell where they're going since they have such low vision but eventually they do get to the center. Now Asta is able to pick them up and basically carry them through as fast as he can because remember light magic is fast. But Asta does struggle with this. He can't really hold on to them for too long as he's pretty much not as strong as he was in canon. Now once they get there to the town square they would meet up with members of the Midnight Sun. They're trying to basically kill off everyone that's in the village. The main group sees that the mages there are about to attack the villagers there. But Magna actually comes through and destroys the projectiles that were going to hit them. With his ice magic having an advantage over them. Now that being said, Magna isn't really tired like he was before. And therefore he still has mana to use against them. So... Magna tells Asta, go in there and fight him, I'll cover you, and Noel, you protect the villagers. So that's what they do. Asta rushes through, and as it's happening, he's not going as fast as he normally would go, due to he wants to, well, control himself and have an easier time at it, but it's still pretty fast. But Mi are actually able to react to it and put up an ice wall in front of him. Mere moments before Asta would actually hit the wall, he actually shoots a beam of light through it 
and this causes it to go through the ice but it almost hits the main leader. It does actually miss because of how light bends through ice. After that, Asta actually goes around the shield while Magna is basically throwing fireballs at it to melt it. Now they're getting a two front attack and they can't really do much about it. When Asta gets to the other side, this is when the other mages start attacking him. He's able to quickly dodge and brings out a stick. This stick, remember, is what he uses for a handle for his magic. Now he creates a sword and he makes it big enough so that he could hit everyone that's there and also makes it a bit wider so that he can basically hit it on the side and not really kill everyone that's there because remember if he were to use it on the you know sharp side it would basically kill him. So he does actually end up hitting everyone at once and basically knocking out most of them. The main guy had a little bit of protection using his eyes so he didn't take too much of the impact. This is due to the fact when light goes through ice some of the light is gone or dissipates if that makes sense so it wouldn't be as strong when it hits the main leader with the rest taken out Asta then asked him why are you doing this these are innocent people they don't deserve to be killed like animals they've done nothing to you and this is when the guy retorts but they are what good are they if they have no magic to speak of see magic in this world is a tool and what is people without tools? Well, they're just animals. So why let them live? Why should you care anyways? You are very powerful and yet you stand for these animals. It doesn't make sense. You are a noble. You should be able to not care for what they want. Also then decides to go closer to the leader. As he's doing so, the leader gets scared as also doesn't say anything until he's right next to him. He starts to laugh as Asta begins to speak. He says, everyone's so hung up on the social classes. Everyone assumes that I'm some sort of noble because of my powers, but that's just not it. I was born this way and I'm a peasant. I'm a peasant with this type of power. So what does that say about your system? It's clearly not true. I have no nobility in my blood, nothing like that. I'm just a peasant orphan from a nowhere village and yet I was able to defeat you. What does that say about your cause? This is when the main leader there is basically left lost for words. He can't say anything to retort what Asa said because it's true. This is where Asa just headbutts him and knocks him out. Then Magna uses a binding spell on all of them as he locks them all up. After this. While they're all unconscious, the main leader has a dream, and in this dream, he sees a world in where the strong are the only ones that exist, and he sees this world as some sort of utopia. By the time he actually comes through and wakes up, he sees Asta in front of him, not directly like it was before, but still somewhat close. He tells Asta that he will not shake his ideals, he knows that he's just and that he will make the world that he wants. After this, he ends up using a magical item, which ends up killing himself as well as some of his men, with one of them leaving just before Magna was able to lock them all up. This results with no one being captured, so they have no idea on the Midnight Sun other than just the name. They have no leads, so to speak. Asta gets furious at this, knowing that this man just chose the death of his entire team and they had no say in it. How can he just take all their lives just like it was nothing? This is when Noel kind of consoles Asta, trying to calm him down somewhat, which does work. And this is when basically those in the village thank the magic knights there. And obviously, this is where they get the magical stone from the grandson of the village chief now this is where i'm going to end it i hope you guys enjoyed it i know i haven't been posting so much at all this kind of month just because i was visiting family and i really didn't want to focus on the channel it was kind of like a little break for me i suppose you could say but yeah uh, i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys you know subscribe to see more in the future and with that being said, I gotta shout out the patrons over on Patreon. So if you wanna join them, it only takes a dollar and you get my videos early 
as well as having the chance of getting a drawing for me each month so there's that the higher tier you are the more likely you are to get a drawing for me as there's gonna be less people in those tiers it does support the channel so if you have the chance to please do so but you don't have to you can support the channel other ways like watching liking and subscribing or even sharing to other people as it does help me out quite a bit so with that being said let's actually get it into the list as i say the names i'll show up a picture of last month's drawing request so yeah so in our gold tier we have nippy director kenny Dwayne fenn and Laiko. so if you want to join them and be a part of my videos in some way you can do so at patreon.com slash comic the man or you could click the link in the description it does truly help and with that being said this is gonna be the end of the video so yeah